Okay, so Tilragorn knocked on Hunhau's room when there was a hat on the door handle and now he's angry with us because he didn't get to smash and Lotus wants us to find out what Till saw and maybe it'll lead us to Shadow Daddy. So the Grineer were drilling it and they found parts of Hunhau which are kind of like Exodia the Forbidden One and Space Mom wants to get her daddy out of her mind because she is a strong independent women's. So the journal is kind of hard to decipher because Till writes with his left hand and they're kind of like smudging across the pages but Space Mom wants you to find more pages to see if it'll help translate his Trapper Keeper notes. So Burns Sword Daddy is all kind of like, you spent too much time with those kids you've changed, let me homeschool you once again and make you like the little Nata I remember, and Lotus is kind of giving the silent treatment because she's like, it's not a phase, Dad! So we get the next piece of data and turns out that there's actually a note about Space Mom and she's like, there's a note in the burn book about me? So she needs to kind of think about how she'll fight the person who wrote it in the parking lot and she leaves us alone for a bit. So plot twist, it turns out the note was an offer to help us and it's none other than Salad V after a few weeks of Accutane treatment and Salad V is like, you surprised hon, you know I listen to all the tea when I'm doing my Pinterest poop in the morning after Starbucks, we be new. And then she's also like, I know all the dirt you can trust me this time but we know she's shady as fuck but we got no choice so we accept Daddy Facecrack's help for now. So Salad V tells us the dirt on Space Mom's dad, he's a real real bad guy and now Space Mom is basically Nata and Bruglia and cause she's torn and she doesn't know what to do. So Salavi has kind of been like, why is Spurned Sword Daddy hanging out with Broody Swordsman? And like, is he just kind of reaching out for a dominant male figure in his life after serious bad flings? But we don't really know either. So eventually we find some Burned Sword Daddy's bones and he's all like, I know where you are. I've been tracking your Snapchat locations. You and all of the other kids hang out at the reservoir. And Space Mom kind of flips out and she said, we need to get there before he does so we can hide all of the receipts. So now we're on Venus and we are following the Brooding Swordsman because Burning Sword Danny can't get to the reservoir because he has no license and we basically have to tail his Uber. So we arrive at Gay Stargate and it's shut and then eventually one of Burning Sword Daddy's slam pieces shows up and we need to show him who's boss so we can get the key and open up the Stargate again. But Space Mom is all like, go through the Gay Stargate because more of Burning Sword Daddy's thoughts are coming after you. It'll lead you to Golden Bed Bath and Beyond which is like their kryptonite. So now we get to the giant bay window and see the moon. Apparently Invisalign was not a thing because the moon has giant braces to keep it tight. But Space Mom, being the queen of clapbacks, managed to hide the entire moon in the out there. And all the Tenno and the receipts too, so everyone thought it had been destroyed. So Saddle V kind of pops up and says, I did Tenno dissection in high school biology and it was just like metal fesh all the way through. What are you hiding from us, Space Mom? So Space Mom is all like, keep the moon in the void, Tenno. It has sequence walls which are toxic to Burning Sword Daddy and his slam pieces. And Sada V is all like, the Tenno don't know about themselves either since the accident. You're a bad mom, Lotus. I'm calling Child Protective Services. So we cut power to the Orican Tower party and our Cephalon Uber can now finally pick us up because the party was kind of lame. So we can finally head to the moon now and basically Space Mom tells us that when the stalker found out about the reservoir he had a total Britney 2007 meltdown and she doesn't want to have the same thing happen to us. So Burning Sword Daddy is telling Brooding Swordsman to tear down the space sequin walls around the moon so him and his crew can party but Space Mom is like prevent those hoes from coming. Betch. We have to go on a field trip to the mini planetarium and shut down the power to stop the Brooding Swordsman from ruining our aesthetic. In order to move the moon from the void, we need the flaming pink eye to smize at four columns and once he does that we can leave and head to the relocated moon party. We hear some stuff from Daddy Long Arms and Space Mom 1.0. Daddy Long Arms wants to destroy the Tenno, thought they were bad kids from the out there, but Space Mom 1.0 wanted to heal us with love and compassion. Daddy Long Arms was like, they shanked you in the eye, babe. Why do you still love them? But Space Mom 1.0 was all like, love is a mother's duty. You cold-hearted but very sexy bastard. Daddy Long Arms is kind of like, I can't protect you from the upcoming space version of A Handmaid's Tale, Margulis. They will kill you unless you plead not guilty. We find out that Space Mom 1.0 gave us chloroform to stop hearing voices. Fast forward to OG Space Mom Simpsons trial and she's coming for the Orokin. She's all like, outside you're all 9 out of 10s but inside you're like a 2. Y'all are Geminis. The Seven raised a skull emoji and Space Mom 1.0 is sentenced to be hung at the Space Gallows, but she also kind of wished Daddy Long Arms was kind of hung too, if you know what I mean. Fast forward a few years after we lost our OG mom and Daddy Long Arms is telling us that he made something called Transference, basically using the Tenno to fight in the international playground for them. We arrive at the reservoir and a giant artichoke appears, a bed comes from the water and suddenly... A child in an Alexander McQueen fall collection pyjama suit falls to the ground and so do we honey, we are shooketh. Dream. No. 
not of what you are, but of what you want to be. Frog Kid crawls to the Warframe like the messy queen he is and suddenly we are given life, honey. We are got to Fireman carry this little thing away, but Brooding Swordsman is like, I can't go back to Juvie, and he has a full-on Mulan reflection moment. So we gotta carry our little drunk BFF away who's pissing Void at all the thoughts as we pass. They're basically the opera of Void Beams, and I kind of hope that the operator didn't have a UTI. Inside our ship, we need to bring our little bestie to bed, but suddenly Brooding Swordsman arrives and starts hurling insults our way, and we got to dip and dive so we can power that bed and turn the massage function on. Unfortunately, it was set to like a deep tissue massage function, and it was too powerful for our little guy, and we are thrown from the bed, and Brooding Swordsman thrusts his thick metal through us, and we are dead, honey. Literally dead. Burning Sword Daddy is giving the worst motivational speech ever, choke me daddy, but Warframe is like, not today Satan, and breaks that sword, and with it, Burning Sword Daddy be gone. Space Mom carries her baby to bed like all mothers do, and then you get to have a free makeover at the Mac counter! Space Kid is a little hungover, but he's kinda sober now, we get to recall the messy night upon the Zaraman 10-0, and that is the end of the second dream.